Hi Scorpio, welcome, kia ora, greetings to your May 2016 Tarot Scope reading with me. You can see we are using the Rider Waite deck, so we are going back to basics for the month of May. But when I say that, that's a little bit of a misconception. This reading is actually quite intrinsically um, deep and meaningful. We are going to be spending time on each card, which is dedicated to roughly a day and a half within the month. So sit back, relax, and just follow the reading through. You'll get the gist of it. I'm sticking pretty much with the original meanings and terms for the cards as they present themselves. So let's see what's ahead for Scorpio, May 2016. Let's see how they're going to project. This is the start of your month. That's the first week. Second, third week, and we will come down to the bottom, which will be the fourth week. Okay, so just looking over the cards. I might move the camera a little bit to put us a little bit more into great perspective. I see quite a mix going on here but I do see a little clutch of kind of greyish cards which tend to indicate a slightly more um, contemplative or quiet period time or inner thought. There is a degree of yellow coming through here as well and we see quite a few cups all um, pulled in together. You have one, two, three major, four major arcana cards. You have one, two, two court cards. So this reading is more about yourself and perhaps your inner perspectives and possibly about the relationships in your life from your, again, perspective or dynamic. But anyhow, let's take a look at the very top far left hand card, which is this one, which starts us off for the month. You start off at the beginning there with a little degree of sadness around relationships. This card can often stand for separation, divorce, or um, the falling of close personal relationships, the falling away of them. It can also be interacted with the contemplation of divorce or um, three people involved somehow so there might be a third person that comes into a relationship scenario that unbalances it. This doesn't always have to be just a romantic relationship it can even be business relationships that can be affected. So that's the feeling that you're starting off with in the beginning of May. So there's a little bit of um, I don't know, turbulence or sadness around heartfelt connections. But if you move on to the very next card, we see the Six of Wands. Now this card is known as the, um, the Victory card or the Triumph card. And it's very closely attached to that other one. So it almost feels as if possibly you're the one making these choices to move on from a relationship. Or that somehow through this... Um, three of swords turning up there there is some victory that is acclaimed out of it so whether or not you can um, manage to work out some personal crises that are involved but it, you manage to save the situation and it is recalculated or it goes down another route that's a possibility so the victory card can also be um, connect to career because it's the thought or creative ideas of our mind as well so there is a feeling that any projects that you have been working on may have this triumphant feel about them as if you have acclaimed some sort of accreditation or you've come to the end of a project and there is success around it um, there can be a little bit of a degree of arrogance involved in this because sometimes we th we think of our successes and we feel really proud and happy but we may forget to include all the people who could have been part of that success journey so it just tells us to be aware 
and to also acknowledge others who may have played a role in our journey of where we've got and who we've become in our successes along the way. This third card, the Empress, one of your major arcanas, it's a very fertile card, so it's about fertility and conception. So this can be a time where new um, pregnancies are conceived, but also fertility of the mind, so ideas and thoughts and creative projects. It is also a card of sexual attraction. So some of you may find some really strong chemistry type related relationships coming onto the scene and they can be quite profound and intense. She is a beautiful card to have in a reading. She is sunny, happy, earth grounded, full of um, joy, um, satisfaction, pleasure. She's very giving um, and just happy and connected. This can also be a time of sort of social activities or engagements where those type of feelings are emulated. And right next to it you have the wish card. And again this speaks of happy um, successes and it can be more than just romance successes. So it can be successes of love or um, en enjoyment, friendships, it can be romance, families, uh, it can be your career, any projects you've been starting. They call it the wish card because at this point in time it appears that things will be flowing or there's this, this energy of connection that allows you to imbue or enjoy your successes. So even though you start this week off with this kind of little bit of... Um, unsettled energy around relationships there you've got two of the success cards in the first week so they really are quite positive I think if you focus on that as opposed to focusing on any negatives you'll bring yourself forward much in a much better way we come to the next line and we see here the ten of pentacles tens and you have two of them in a row so again we're getting an amplified message of the number 10 here. Tens are about endings. So you have got endings going on for you in May. Um, there's something, there's, there's a relationship that you're letting go. Perhaps it wasn't serving you very well or it was one you didn't need or it was an extra relationship that was hidden that needs to be let go. That Ten of Pentacles usually says this is the happy home, happy family and harmony and it's next to this one as well so your home life somehow feels more complete or safeguarded or happy um, I think you work through something and you manage to bring balance back in into home relationships at any point those two tens together exude a very similar feeling the first one is about financial stability having come a full circle in life and having your family and your uh, physical manifestations and your prosperity in a good position with sort of positive um, feeling of balance and control. So it's usually a sign of success in the physical material world as well as your family being around you and close and connected and you enjoying that. And this 10 is more about the emotional perspective of life and feeling that wonderful um, joy and harmony and love and just adoration and being complete with the people in your life. There are children involved so whether or not these are your own children or, ch or siblings or just extended family members or even your broader close family which you could term as friends but whatever it is there's some great harmony and happiness in your reading you know the wish card the two tens very prosperous cards to be thinking on Scorpio so you need to as I said before imbue the positives in your reading and just um, bypass any of the little glitchy things such as this one here the eight of cups so we see this moon up here in the sun and I think of that as being back in the in the eclipses which were in March and I said that energy would um, keep protruding itself through for a few months so this may be coming there's definitely a walking away from a relationship here you've started it up here I think you carry it through here um, it was an unbalanced relationship so there wasn't a great degree of balance in it and you are figuring out that it is better for you to move forward and leave it behind and once you make that decision you will know that every time you close a door there's a new door opening um, it could have been a hidden agenda type relationship or one that you've kept under 
guard or not been you know fully open about Scorpios quite often like to have a little bit of secrecy in their life so there could have been something along these lines but it would feel as though it's just time to let it go and groove into the newness as you walk forward and seek something else for your heart and for you know love and romance connections it doesn't have to be tied up with these two cards this just could be another paradigm of you or another portion or angle we come to this card in the end of this week, and this is the Hanged Man. It means he's come to a crossroads most usually, and it could have something to do with this feeling of walking away. So sometimes he was on a direction, and then something comes and sort of says to him, no, we're changing direction, we're making changes in our attitudes or our opinions or um, a project that we've been doing or or any of those type of feelings is what the hanged man presents us with. It's often a time when delays will set in, so if you were wanting to get quick action of anything at this time, most of the times things will be a little bit cut and stagnant, and you have to wait for it to re-access itself again and to restart up. Sometimes it takes an illumination from your end, some sort of thought process where you get the aha moment and you go, ah, oh, got it. That's what I need to do. So some of this you could be called, uh, some of this card's energy you could say is just about taking a step back and seeing the bigger, broader picture and being able to implement that into your situation, some of which could be emotional and others of which are much more um, directional in life and could even include your career perspectives or where you live or your whole way you want to move forward it can also pertain to spirituality and we come down here to the Hierophant this is the beginning of the third week for you in May the Hierophant tell he has his hand up and he often says stop whatever you're doing stop so you're getting two messages here two major arcanas that really relate to each other about halting a project that you're doing or halting a way you're um, behaving or acting or feeling. It's telling you to re-strategize and re-contemplate. The Hierophant is also a religious card or you know sort of a um, card of religious belief so some of you may be addressing that in your own mind or changing your belief systems or altering something very deep within your own personal psyche or spirituality. The other thing about the Hierophant, he can suggest literal legal terms and laws. And it, when he turns up, it doesn't pay to be doing anything corrupt or underhand. It pays to keep your um, business dealings and your emotional dealings clean cut and above board. So that's the kind of messages that the Hierophant tells us when he's around. We come to the next card here, the Four of Wands. You've got so much potential for some sort of really happy engagement in your relationships. I hope that you can really see it for the month and that you work through any of these other little shifts or merges that are going on because this is another really happy positive card. There are two more people again symbolizing happiness and togetherness and often it's the card of engagements or celebratory parties or events that you could be attending or hosting or being the main person or the center of. So again it's got the creative feel for it so it's Quite often about newness and um, harmony in the home and well-balanced homes and good foundations of relationships. It's just speaking to you over and over and over again with these possibilities. It's like you've got two things going on as if I get the feeling that something's been hidden and um, you're either having to come to face getting rid of it or rebalancing it or choosing between one or the other but there's like a paradox of stuff going on here for you guys um, right next to that we get this proposition of love again and he's heading right into here so there is definitely love and emotions and heart connection for you in this month of May it seems very much about yourself and your feelings I am really getting that as a strong message so this is your sign of course the watery sign as are all the cups that have been and it's the sign the proposition of the offerings of love 
So this could be a young person who actually does come into your life and it will be a watery sign person. So it could be a heart connection, it's the pro propensity for new relationships yet again. Um, if it's not a heart relationship or, or a romance, it's just the offering of something beautiful that connects at the heart. That could be a long-term friendship or partnership one way or another. It is a lovely card to get in the reading. You come here to the end of this week which had the two major arcana cards in it. Both of them quite um, stern and forceful. Judgment again and it's right above the hanged man is all about listening to your inner self and knowing whether you're going the right way in life and what decisions you are making. Do you need to make changes? Does something need to be altered? So it's about facing, I guess it's about facing the hidden agenda stuff and about your future and about the realities and understanding that the path you're on is where you're going to end up in the future so it's about looking at where you think your future will be and is that really where you want to be or does it need to be altered you know it's that type of feeling going on um, yeah there's, there's definitely something you've been hiding or keeping to yourself or secret that you need to address and either be open about or you're letting it go or you're making changes to the way that it's been handled Let's have a look down here. We move more into sort of um, finances down there for that first part of the week. So here with the Four of Pentacles, it's like you're worried about your money or your investments or how you've been managing your money. But most of that is more of an inner fear of your own, thinking that you haven't got enough. When we've seen it up here, you are actually quite, you know well looked after if you like at the moment or if you look hard enough you'll see it. This card tells us to let go a little bit more and not be so fearful. Um, yeah of course keep an eye on your investments and where you have them and be sound and logical about it but don't be too closed off because if we create fear around our um, anything, whatever you choose to create fear around, then you stop that flow from coming in and you stop the growth and the prosperity. I often think this card can sometimes also mean that money could be coming to you from a dividend or a fund or a charity or even a bequeath, a bequeathment of some sort. There's that possibility. This card shows us this guy. Um, he's been hard working and he's thinking about or contemplating how he is investing his money. He is slowly but surely with hard work accruing funds. These two go quite nicely together. They're very much about the thought perspective of your money. So again the message is don't be too worried or in fear. Use more positive means of growing your wealth and the feeling about your wealth. Know that when you accept money and material goods into your life and that you allow the manifestation of that then all sorts of positives will keep flowing in it's the way the universe works these two here quite related as well even the clouds kind of merge together um, he's a younger air sign energy type person and he comes in with quite strong gutsy determined energy it can be a verbal time they love using their words, the air signs, and he's sort of heading in here towards your money or finances or career. So this could be someone that you work with or is around this type of realm of your life. And this one here, he's still also joining him. It feels as if there could be some sort of disagreement. Um, you know, it's definitely verbal communication of some sort. And this is up quite often three people are involved and someone is the outright winner. But then these two will possibly walk away, leaving it behind, going, no, nah, I've had enough of that. This is usually you in the reading. So you feel a degree of satisfaction like, ha, got you, stick that, I've won. You've got two of these types of energies, one up there and one here. And they're very, very similar with this feeling of, you know, I'm right, stick it, take it or leave it. When you engage in these type of activities, um, you just need to think about the consequences and always, is there a better way to handle it? Could I use better words or could I choose a better moment to deliver what I'm thinking or feeling? 
So it seems to me that the last week of May you end up either um, yeah, venting your opinions or your decision about something. You do generally win over with it, but just think twice about how you're going to do it. And regards your wealth down here, yeah, that it's on your mind, so it's either career or your finances or your money that's on your mind in the beginning, but it's not negative stuff, it's actually quite positive. You just have to be a bit more open and a little less rigid and worried about it. So there we are, Scorpio. You have quite uh, an interesting reading. It's up and down with so many great posi positive possibilities, and I think you should be focusing on them. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six beautiful possibilities at least out of the deck that if you um, focus on them and harness on them you should be able to really nurture something strong and powerful and wonderful for the month of May. So there we are guys, thank you very much for joining me and I wish you all the best for a happy and successful May. Let go of the stuff that no longer serves you and be prepared to walk forward and um, set the new tones, the directions you're heading with all areas of your life. Take care everyone, thank you for subbing, liking and commenting and I'll see you in June. Ka kitea noa, much aroha, namaste.